my point is, is that the report essentially to myself, to an extent, and others, is it's an intellectual statement of the obvious for those who have lived here. Uh, so what does that mean to, you know, the average person? Yeah, that's just life. That's the way it works. That's the way it's always worked. But, but people don't, what the next step is, is to show the difference between uh, what would happen if you weren't conducting non-renewable export activities by those from the outside that take the money outside, did it yourself, if you're going to do it, do it yourself, and truly value the renewable resource activities, many of which are just ignored. Because they're not, there's still plenty of jobs. Uh, you know, Vermont produces a lot of maple syrup. We hardly produce any here, but we could. We could beat Vermont. I, I, just Somebody just say we can. And I will personally lead that charge and beat Vermont. That. But there's not hundreds of millions or billions of dollars associated with that business. And they're not going to come in from London and these exotic places and, and throw around a few million dollars, buy off the local politicians, pull a few scams, and, and make a lot of money and leave with maple syrup. So nobody's interested in it. Well partly, well, partly what you're talking about, I think, was addressed, and I'll be a little <coughs> archaic now, but in, when folk did the 1990 uh, Sustainable Development Report, taking a look at what we had here, what resources we had here, and we could, um, albeit small businesses, but we can support ourselves here. Those are the people that have chosen to stay here for the reasons that you talked about. We like the amenities, and um, so address that. And I think that kind of report could um, be beneficial to be updated. It could be beneficial to take another look at that. And um, and I think what's going on right now, Tuesday, there was a big um, summit at the Western UP Food Hub for people who are familiar with that. And, um, and that's taking a look at what do we have here, trying to grow and raise food more locally. Local is kind of a big region, but it's considered the whole UP, and I don't think they're in, uh, in Wisconsin, Minnesota too. And there's a hub in, um, in the eastern UP, Marquette, and now in the western UP, um, trying to um, bring infrastructure and people together to support people growing um, their own food and finding markets for it, trying to be those people to um, the people that want to buy, trying to find a, a place for people to house all that. So if somebody, even a grocery store or restaurant wants something, they want they want lamb and they want some vegetables and they want honey and they want some maple syrup that it's housed in one place, people know they can come to it. And and so that's really starting to um, kind of on fire. Did anybody go to the summit, by the way? Yeah. And um, I know it was well attended, it was mostly for those people producing, but it shows a lot of promise and the infrastructure is there to do kind of what you're talking about. I, I think yeah. you're absolutely right. But, and I have my note, I was writing notes as you were talking. In my notes is, there is opposition, I'm talking about government opposition yeah. to that. Right. There are at least a dozen, and it's not just hog farming, it's other farming activities. It's, the, the government is moving to suppress that. And they are driven by lobby, industry, etc. Uh, I think that needs to be part of the story as well. Because I think that resonates with those people who say to themselves, yeah, that's the way it's always been.